Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome to Minecraft 1.20 and welcome to the beginning of the Minecraft Survival Guide Season 3. If this is your first time here, this is a tutorial Let's Play series where every episode I want to teach you something about Minecraft and show you a little bit about what it's like to play Minecraft in a single player world. In Season 3 we're doing things a little bit differently and each episode will start with a short form tutorial, just a tutorial that you can kind of get to grips with within the first few minutes of the video and the rest of the video is going to be explaining a bit more context, why we're doing what we're doing and how it fits into a long-term survival world. But this video is going to be a little different to that. This is going to be episode zero in which we're actually going to select the world in which we play. Doing that requires a little bit more of an explanation of how Minecraft worlds work. So we're going to click on single player and it will give us this dialog box if you've loaded up Minecraft for the first time. This is the screen where you name your world, you choose a few of the settings of the world and crucially if we click on the world tab at the top here you can choose a seed for the world generator and the world seed can be any combination of letters and characters it effectively just gives minecraft a string of data that it uses to generate the entire world and the fantastic thing about world seeds is that they are guaranteed to generate exactly the same world when you put the same number into Minecraft somewhere else. For example, my favorite number in the world is the number 17. I'm going to put that into the world generator here. We're going to click create new world and Minecraft will do its thing. It's going to load up a bunch of new terrain. It's going to place me at the spawn point of the world, the center of the world really where you start your adventure. And as you can see, the first thing I'm looking at is this lilac bush, right? But it puts us in a little forest right here with a bunch of lilac bushes, a bunch of oak trees and birch trees around. We can take a look. Take a look at the uh, landmarks around here. There's a mountain loading in over there. There's a cliff over there. And there's a bunch of trees and stuff around, a little river over here as well. Okay, now we're going to log out. We're going to delete that world and we're going to do exactly the same thing again. If I hit create new world down here, it will give us the same screen. We're going to type the number 17 in. We're going to hit create new world without touching anything else. And we aren't still staring at exactly the same lilac bush because the game does randomize your position a little bit when you first load up a world. But here we are with that same cliff facing us, the same mountain loading in the distance, the same lilacs all around us, the same river down there. The only thing that's slightly different will be some of the animals. I'm pretty sure we didn't have chickens before. And I'm going to delete that world again because that was really just an example. The point of this is that you can play Play along with me. You can input the same seed number that I'm going to use for the world that we'll be playing out the Minecraft survival guide in, and you can explore along with me as we play the game together. Or you can not do that. You can go to this seed generator and type in something completely random, something significant to you. You can even leave it blank and the game will decide your world seed for you. Now, if you change any of the settings on this screen, like if you change the world to a super flat or a large biomes world, or if you end up doing amplified terrain, then that's all going to change the way the world looks. But what we're dealing with is the default world type. That is where most people play Minecraft typically. So that's the one we're going to go with. And we are going to be choosing a seed. In the previous two seasons of the Minecraft Survival Guide, I decided to leave the world seed blank. I just decided, let's roll the dice and I will work with whatever Minecraft gives me. And I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time around because I get to show you one of the joys of the community around Minecraft, and that's that there are some amazing tools out there to help you find a world you're going to fall in love with. This is chunkbase.com, and it hosts a bunch of different apps that can be used to find stuff in your Minecraft world. If we click on the apps section here, you'll see that there are a bunch of different options for locating generated structures, the biomes of the world, features of the nether and end dimensions, a whole variety of stuff. Each of these tools is separate, but if you want all of them in one place, you can click on the seed map app link there, and that will take you to this kind of map. Now, there's a lot of information on the screen right now, and I'll show you how to get rid of some of that. So we are just looking at biomes, because that's really what I want to focus this video on. We're going to deselect all by clicking that link there. We're going to select biomes and spawn point, and we can close up this menu and that's all we will see for this world because we don't really want to spoil the locations of all of that stuff. So what you're looking at now is a really zoomed out picture of a Minecraft world and the compass there is at your estimated spawn point. The zero zero point is where your world typically starts. And if I hover over this area right here, you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, it tells me that the biome here is probably going to be a sunflower plains. The slightly darker green area adjacent to that is a plains biome, one of the rolling, flat, open ones with occasional trees. To the right of that there is a forest in the slightly darker green, and throughout all of this you'll find things like beaches, 
oceans, rivers, and as we zoom out, you will see even more colors start to fill up the picture. Each one of those represents a different environment inside of a Minecraft world, a different biome. And that's the way Minecraft splits up its landscape and splits up its resources. Over here, this kind of yellow green environment is a jungle, and that's where you can expect to find jungle wood. Adjacent to that over here in this sort of sandy yellow color is a savanna, and that's where you can find acacia trees. By clicking and dragging around the map, we can take a look around at what this Minecraft world has to offer. And that's what we're going to do as we search for the seed we'd like to play in together. And just to briefly demonstrate how reliable this is, we're going to put in that seed number number 17 from earlier in the video, and as you can see, this launches us in a flower forest. That right there is our estimated spawn point, and the flower forest environment is where you can find things like the lilacs that we spawn next to, the orange tulips that were nearby on the ground. You might recognize even the shape of this river if you were paying close attention to the video earlier. If I click on this terrain checkbox here, it will even give me an idea of the contours of the world around me, and I'm fairly certain that that section to the north of where the compass point is there was the cliff that we were looking at when we loaded in. This section over here where you see a shadow because the terrain is kind of taller there might even have been the mountain that we saw loading into the distance. But it's difficult to get a sense of the scale of a Minecraft world by looking at this top-down map. And if I continue to zoom out here, you will get a sense of just how big a Minecraft world truly is. Now, what if I told you that this was only a small fraction of the world? Because from end to end, from east to west and north to south, a Minecraft world is 60 million blocks by 60 million blocks. That's actually several times the size of the surface of the Earth we live on. <laughs> it would take you a lifetime to explore a single world, and in your time playing in a Minecraft world, even if you have it for decades, you'll probably only ever see a fraction of the world and play in a fraction of that space. Which is why this time around I'm looking for a world that I can really fall in love with. I'm looking for a world that I'm really happy with the environment I start out in, and it makes me enthusiastic to play the game every time I log in. Now if you're playing Minecraft for the first time, there are a couple of different options. You could enter something significant to you in the world seed, like my lucky number 17. You could put in your own name or the name of somebody in your immediate family. You could put in anything, basically. And Minecraft's code will turn that into a world that you can play in and have the same adventures that we're going to be having in the Minecraft Survival Guide. If you're not feeling especially inspired, you could just leave the seed blank, and Minecraft will effectively do the equivalent of clicking this random button and placing you somewhere completely random. The thing is, you might not like where you end up. Right here, there's a snowy environment next to a giant forest. You're surrounded by ice. And to me, this doesn't look like an ideal location to start an adventure in Minecraft. It feels kind of like being thrown into the wilderness and expected to survive. <laughs> so if you want to play along with me in Season 3 of the Minecraft Survival Guide, we're going to be selecting a seed that's a little bit closer to what I want from this update. When I've been looking for seeds, I have a couple of criteria. First of all, I would like there to be a desert within a couple of thousand blocks of my spawn point. I want it to be something that I can walk to within one Minecraft day, and a couple of thousand blocks seems to fit the bill. If I zoom out in this world, you'll notice that there aren't a great deal of the warmer colored biomes, and in fact, the nearest desert to this one, maybe it's this desert down here to the south, that's about 5,000 blocks away according to the coordinates that you can see in the lower left and the lower right. This desert here might be a little bit closer, but it's also very small and it's next to a large Badlands biome, so that might be okay, but this looks like a very, very long walk from here all the way down to here to find our first desert. And deserts are going to be quite important to Minecraft 1.20 because a bunch of the features that have been added in this update rely on you finding a desert or biomes that will be found near a desert. Camels will now appear in desert villages. Desert temples now have suspicious sand in them where you can practice archaeology and dig up artifacts from the world's ancient past. Another thing I would really like to find is a cherry grove biome. And those are fairly frequent in this world. It looks like there's a couple fairly close to my spawn point. They're within about a thousand blocks. They're up here in this mountainous region. There's also a larger one up here to the north that looks like it gets some quite tall terrain with a little valley in the middle. That's kind of pleasant. But my final criteria is a little bit more of an artistic one. I want there to be a landmark near my spawn point that I can really fall in love with. And ideally, 
I'd like it to be a less harsh and unforgiving environment than a snowy tundra, or in this case, a beach next to a frozen ocean. I think we want to start somewhere that feels a little bit more welcoming than that. So if I want to, I can just hit random and it'll give us something completely different. This one, as you can see, spawns us in a sparse jungle biome. So not as dense as a regular jungle, you'll find a few trees dotted around. There are some nearby birch forests and plains biomes and a quite large ocean next to this. There is a cherry grove up to the north, and if we travel a little bit further north and a little bit further east, you'll find a fairly decent sized desert. This might be an interesting world to take a look at. I'm going to copy this seed and we're going to paste that into Minecraft. Here we are back at our Create New World screen. We're going to paste that number into the seed for the world generator. We're going to name this one. We're going to keep the name here as New World, and we're going to set our game mode to creative, just so we can fly around freely, take a look at the terrain, and see, does this feel like the right world for us? Because the same seed will always give us the same world, we can always recreate the world later in survival mode so that we don't have access to all of the creative mode, free inventory, flight, and everything else. And here we are in that sparse jungle biome that I mentioned. I'm going to double tap jump just so I can start flying around and it looks like we're spawning next to a pretty large hill. There is our ocean adjacent to us and there's a few other landmarks that we can see as we look around. In fact, if I hold F3 and press F4, that will take me to the game mode switcher and we can use spectator mode to fly around a little bit and get to some of those landmarks a little quicker. There's a really interesting little basin here at the edge of this ocean biome. That's kind of a fun landmark. What else do we have? We want to continue to the north and here is one of the cherry grove biomes. That's really not too far away from the spawn point and it looks like quite a lot of cherry trees right there. I'm excited to get to explore those a little later, but we'll leave that alone for now. And here is that desert biome I was looking for. It has a desert temple so we could do some archaeology there. There is a desert village really close by so that we could find a camel there and hopefully find another desert village somewhere in the vicinity so that we could breed the two village camels together. Yep, there is another village over here through the Badlands Canyon over here where you can find a bunch of terracotta and red sand and a river running through it all. So this world seems to fit the basic requirements of what I was after, but something about it doesn't quite feel right to me. And maybe it's something about this spawn location. It didn't really have the character that I was looking for. The jungle doesn't feel really iconic, I guess. And sometimes I just want to be wowed by Minecraft terrain almost immediately because Minecraft is capable of generating some really beautiful landscapes. And while it's obviously important to acknowledge that you could start anywhere in a Minecraft world and just roam around and find stuff until you're happy with the location that you settle in, that's not really what I want to do with this series. So while this world seems okay, it's got a lot of wood nearby, it's got a lot of different resources, we could make a start here, but I think we can do better. So that's when we go back to the chunk base seed app, we hit random, and we look again, we look for the criteria that I'm after. Does it have a desert really close by? This one seems to. Let's click on the terrain box again there so we get a bit better of an idea of what we're looking at. The spawn right here is in a forest biome next to a beach. There's a little patch of jungle, a big plains biome right there that you could maybe do some building in. Let's take a quick look around here. There's a mangrove swamp right there. That's kind of a cool biome to take a look at, but judging by what we have around here, doesn't seem like there's a cherry grove in close proximity. The nearest one I've seen is over here by this crater, which could look quite spectacular, actually, if that's a really tall mountain. But that is 3,000, 4,000 blocks away, more or less. Like, diagonally speaking, that's about 4,000 blocks. And there are a few other cherry groves around here, but they're all around the same distance away from spawn. So I'm just going to reject this one. I think we can do better than that. This one looks like another sparse jungle forest kind of start. There's a plains biome right there. Very, very large desert actually to the south. That's kind of cool looking. And once again, it looks like cherry groves are, well, they're a little bit further out, but they are there through some very mountainous looking jungle. It looks like <laughs> there's some pretty spectacular mountains around there. Once you've had a bit more experience with these maps, you'll start to recognize what some of the features are and how they really relate to the stuff you're seeing in your world. One thing I am slightly worried about is being surrounded by forests or jungles right there at spawn. That feels like a very large bamboo jungle right there, and I don't want us to feel completely disoriented when we're taking our first steps in the world. Let's load this up and see how it feels. 
And with that seed in the world generator, well, we've started in a tree. <laughs> and I guess we're a little higher up than I expected to be, so we can see the plains biome from over there. But that right there is the bamboo jungle, which looks pretty large. We can see the plains biome down below us from there. That's maybe where we'd make a starter house. And flying around in spectator mode, we'll get to see a little bit more of this world. There's a mountain forming over here. We've got a bit of a snowy peak right there with a grove biome oh and there's a village really close by this plains biome and to be honest a lot of people would really like to have a village near their spawn point but i'm going to avoid talking about villages until a little bit later into the series because i don't want us to immediately leap in and start managing villages and take care of this whole community when we're still trying to find our feet. Across the ocean right here is where we find our desert biome. I can immediately see things like an abandoned mine shaft in there on the surface. There is a pillager outpost very close by as well. The trees here in the desert indicate that there is a lush cave underneath this desert, which is really interesting generation. Actually, that's kind of cool and would be fun to explore. This desert village has generated right on the edge of a pretty significant cave, and there's the lush cave terrain underneath there. If this is the kind of stuff that excites you, then obviously go for it. If you find terrain features like this and you think, yeah, I'd like to build there, that looks awesome, then by all means, check out seeds like this, load them up in survival and make the best of it. But in this case, again, I don't really feel like this seed is the one for me. And that's because I've already found the seed I want to use for this season of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I actually did a live stream a week or so ago where we were looking for random seeds using chunk base the way I just explained to you. And this seed right here, I think, is the one. We're going to load this up very briefly in creative. I really don't want to explore more of this world than I have to just to get my point across here. And my point is that the spawn area for this world sort of feels like the Minecraft Survival Guide Season 2 did. It spawns us in a little forest by a beach. There isn't really a whole lot else going on. But then these hills start to appear in the distance. And as I went into spectator mode and flew towards these hills, I wanted to explore a little bit, find the cherry groves that I'd seen marked on the map, find a couple of the other landmarks that might be part of this world's generation. And as I came over here, this mountain loaded into the distance and the waterfall started to flow down as the water generated for the first time. And the water was pushing the pink petals from these cherry groves all the way down to the foot of the mountain. And something about the combination of the sparse cherry trees and the frozen peak of this mountain and the waterfalls coming down here made me think, yeah, you know what? I'd like to look at that in Minecraft every day for the next year or so. This really feels like a place that I could build a starter house facing this mountain and be happy looking out my front door every single morning. I saw this mountain and I pretty much instantly fell in love with this world. And so you'll see this mountain in episode one of the Minecraft Survival Guide season three. This is where we are going to be making our base. This is the world that will be starting our journey in survival Minecraft and who knows where it's going to take us. I've had a look at the map for this seed and it meets my criteria pretty well. There is another cherry grove over here to the north, which has a few more sparse trees. There's a little bit of mountainous terrain. There's a desert fairly close by. There aren't any villages that are going to interfere with the early stages of exploring the game. I think we have a winner here. And if you're looking at this thinking, eh, it's cool, but it's not for me, then fine. You can go and find another Minecraft world that suits you better. What I try and do in the Minecraft Survival Guide is provide tutorials that make sense for any Minecraft world that you play it. So if you're able to find a world that you can fall in love with, or if you just want to click random and choose whatever world the dice roll for you that day, that that's absolutely fine. We can all learn about this game together and have a lot of fun doing it. So if you're really excited to get started, the seed for this world will be in the video description along with a link to chunkbase.com so that you can check out more world seeds if you want to. But the Minecraft Survival Guide Episode 1 will be arriving tomorrow and I hope you folks enjoy it. But for now, thank you for watching this introductory episode to the new Survival Guide world. Happy Season 3, <laughs> happy 1.20 release day. Hopefully we're all going to have a lot of fun together in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixlorus. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye for now.